You ready? There is a connection between the paranormal, UFOs, and the myths of ancient history. The clues are scattered across the landscape from a forbidden past. Maybe even in your own backyard. There is a connection between the true nature of our reality, consciousness, and the unexplained. I'm Carl the Crusher. Let's explore the unknown. Welcome to Carla Crusher. I have been doing a ton of research up at the Mount Wilson Ranch and all over the place, but one of the spots that I haven't revisited in almost two years is a really strange mystery canyon that is on the other side of these hills back here. But everything is just so frosted and beautiful here by the lake and the mountains. I wanted to show you guys what it looks like really quick. sign as soon as we dropped down off of the mesa there's no snow so up on top it's all frosted and a mess but down below hopefully it's not too muddy and we can actually get back in there i don't know guys this is like the good part of the road i don't have like really great off-road suspension on this truck here. It already feels like slippery clay. I might have to turn around here if it gets too messy and go to another spot. In the desert southwest of uh, Utah, Arizona, Nevada, when it rains or gets wet and then thaws like this, uh, the roads are just like slick, wet clay. And it gets mixed in with sand and it's not like regular mud puddles you really cannot dry in it it just turns into solid like wet concrete it'll coat all over the the wheels of your truck uh, and it just gets completely slick if you get in a deep hole or off in a rut uh, there's really no getting out you have to have uh, shovels and special tracks or have uh, somebody help you and I have a track but I forgot a shovel today but I think we're gonna make it it looks pretty good Look at this <laughs> sloppy, muddy mess. The side of the truck is completely caked. So I gotta change into my boots and we are at our first stop. One of the coolest spots. I've only been here one other time before and I really didn't do that great of a job because I was in a hurry. And then where we're gonna go next, we're gonna embark on an amazing journey uh, revisiting the Mystery Canyon where a lot of this uh, whole thing began for me. First stop on our new expedition is Dinosaur Rock. We're revisiting this place. It came here a little over a year ago and most people just drive right past this place because there's actual petrified dinosaur tracks in the sandstone right over there if you continue up the valley. But this place is also really fascinating to me because these giant stones look like weird petrified dragon skulls or dinosaur skulls. I haven't even started exploring all the snow and the rain and the runoff and everything. There is flakes all over the ground here. This is a place where people usually come up here and just like do campfires, break beer bottles and stuff, but there is arrowhead flakes and stuff all over the ground. Right here, all over. There's a flake, there's a flake. All in the ground here in the mud is actual artifacts from tool making. Look at that. They're just laying all over the ground. Here is a really big one right there, right? And there's also litter and debris and trash, nails everywhere, broken glass right here. Doesn't that look like a dinosaur skull? That's 
so cool. All right, I'm gonna keep a, an eye out and really watch where I place my steps so that I don't ruin any artifacts, but I'm gonna keep my eye out for any arrowheads and real stuff. But the breeze just picked up a little bit and that reminds me of a couple things that I wanna talk about. So this is what I do. I get a lot of complaints about the wind noise. And first of all, uh, Chris Lado from the Lado Files let me know that there is a new like Adobe AI software that will help cut the wind noise. And so if I need to, I'm gonna start using that and hopefully it helps a lot. But just so you know, I created this wind muff thing. It's like a microphone sock and I cut a hole in it and I put it right over my phone so I can film with it and try to cut the noise. And I've been using that, but sometimes when you're up on a mountain in the snow and the wind is just whipping right across, there's not a lot that you can do. And I'll tell you, a lot of people say, well, why don't you just use like a lavalier or like a portable mic so you can wire up? Well, when you're in a group with like four or five people, you get spread out over, you know, 30 to 50 yards or over the cross, across a hillside trying to find uh, a cave or artifacts and things, trying to get everybody to stop, get together, turn all their microphones on, or just recording like eight hours straight. It's just not realistic for me. I'm just a YouTuber using my phone, using the windsock. But now I've got AI and algorithms uh, trying to help me out. So we're gonna do our best there. Mount Wilson Ranch. Oh my gosh, so much to talk about, so much that I'm not allowed to talk about. You guys, I was just up there for like a whole week with a professional crew doing a lot of amazing stuff. And I filmed a lot of behind the scenes footage, but I have to wait until kind of the middle of the summer. So when everything else actually is officially released, then I can release all of my behind the scenes stuff. And you're gonna be the first ones to see it exclusively right here on Carl the Crusher, and especially over on my website, carlcrusher.com. In fact, I'm rolling out a whole new backend on my website where everything that I do as far as like my meditations, my contact protocol, the basic steps of how I do everything that I do when I go to these places and I try to sit down, meditate and connect uh, with these ancient spots, as well as uh, workshops, uh, how I do what I do as a content creator and a whole bunch more, uh, plus the ability to uh, be able to access all of that. Get on the calendar and schedule one-on-one -on -one meetups and uh, also interviews with me as as well as tours and trips. Schedule and book a trip to go to Mount Wilson Ranch and schedule a time when I'm gonna be there. So that's gonna be really cool. So check it out on carlcrusher.com. I'm gonna put all the links in the description box down below. And uh, hopefully I don't get eaten by dinosaurs out here today. All right, we're gonna keep our eye out for artifacts and explore this cool spot. This is our stop number one. And then we're gonna go up to the Mystery Canyon that I went to like a year ago. I started going up to these petroglyph sites. I started sensing that there was weird energy there, taking uh, Tibetan Buddhist meditation bowls and they would vibrate against the cliffside even when I wasn't touching them and different things. And now, uh, a year later, I've been on this whole journey to Magic Mesa, up to Skinwalker Ranch, to Mount Wilson Ranch, and I'm really curious. I wanna come back to this canyon and explore it from beginning to end and try to find every single panel of petroglyphs and pictographs all the way to these some amazing ones that I've discovered that I haven't really shared with anyone yet. Enough talking about it. It's time to go exploring uh, and see what we can find. This is where these weird like stones are that almost look like skulls. Now, I know that they're natural formations, but it's definitely strange when you look at it from a distance, especially like from up high, it's almost like two giant dragons are curled up here at the bottom of this dried out uh, like riverbed or something prehistorically. I mean, it just looks like petrified stone. But when you come up and look at this, look, people have even stacked rocks up in the mouth to make it look like teeth. And man, it really does. Doesn't that just look exactly like a giant dragon skull? And when we walk around this way, around the backside, there's another one. I just want to walk around and explore this place. See, obviously people come up here and they're just nails and garbage and trash all over the place and they've decorated this big stone 
to look like a dragon skull or a dinosaur skull, but you really don't have to walk very far. If I just even turn around right here and walk down the hill, let's just see how far I have to go before I actually find real artifacts. Uh, there's the truck right there. Look, no joke, this is actually a pottery shard. I mean, there's trash everywhere. People drive, look, there's tire tracks right here. And these are pottery shards. Now, I know that you're not supposed to touch them, but I just wanna show for demonstration how these are just getting driven over and wasted at some of these sites. Here's another big piece of probably ancestral Puebloan or basket making culture pottery. That's just uh, ancient pottery laying right here on the ground. And over here you've got primitive flaking and artifacts and uh, just laying out here all over the place. Here you've got flaking and agate right here. Any one of these could be remnants from an arrowhead, spearhead, or anything like that, just laying all over the ground. So this is actually an interesting archeological location. See here, look at this one. That's been uncovered in the mud. It's just like a sheer, looks like a piece of glass that was part of a tool making process by ancient indigenous people right here where everybody just pulls up where they drive their truck over and party. So I just wanna bring awareness to that every time I come here and try to pick up the litter and leave places better than you found it. Now I'm not trying to make a bunch of people feel guilty or cast judgment or anything like that because I go visit these places, I drive up here. There is just a right way and a wrong way to do it. Make sure that you're always respecting the law. Make sure you know where you're putting your feet when you're going into ancient locations. I mean, these places were inhabited as part of a story that connects to the ancestral Puebloans that goes all the way to Chaco Canyon, to Mesa Verde, that spreads out uh, clear back uh, into the BCs and up into like 900 AD to 1200 AD when people spread out into all of these valleys. And this was the last remnants of a lot of their culture and their artifacts. And so I think that there's an appropriate way to come to these locations and actually really enjoy them, respect them and appreciate them without driving and building over top of them and leaving debris, dirty nails, uh, rubbish and trash everywhere. I just think that's, uh, there's no excuse for that. There really is just like a debris field of pottery, <laughs> flaking, all kinds of stuff. So I'm gonna watch my step as we go through this way. And I, I wanna just show you guys for fun how this looks like a big dinosaur skull as I walk this way. But then as we come around the side, it really does look like another one over here. If you keep going, like there's two giant dragons that wrapped up. So you have the one right here. This would be the back of its skull. We walk up here and then look at this giant guy. Look at that. Doesn't that look like a big dragon head perched up as well with the eye socket? Like that would have been his mouth and now it's all just like petrified shut. And that's the nose and the jaw. And it just gets weirder when you walk up here because there's a cave underneath his head right here. I wonder if there's anything in there. There's symbols drawn on the wall. But yeah, doesn't that look like another big snake head? Like this one's curled up this way and that one's going that way. These are all nails. Everything that looks like grass laying on the ground, that's nails and trash. And I bet if we, we looked around just like right here where all this garbage is, I bet you there's ancient pottery that's over a thousand years old, probably washed up from the rain right here by this place that was probably a ancient indigenous dwelling site. It's super slippery right here. Okay. Well, let's go inside, see if there's anything in here. Sometimes people uh, 
camp out back in here. This looks like a meditating stone. That looks like a like a seat, like you sit there and meditate. This whole place is kind of like a maze back in here. See? Weaves all over. We can hear where we're headed next. Over the ancient petroglyph site, there is a shotgun blast going on. So somebody is shooting over there. Look at this. If anybody knows what these symbols are, this just looks like a esoteric sun symbol, almost like a Wiccan. But this definitely looks like a meditation seat or a shaman seat where uh, people probably sit and meditate. There's water dripping down the back of the cave. I was wondering what that noise was, but it's because it actually goes out up there. Yeah, look at that. And then these symbols here, it looks like a crescent on the stand. This looks like a, almost like a medicine wheel with the directional stuff on there, but I, I'm not sure exactly what group or who could have painted on there, but that looks more modern, like other people coming back up here. We come back around here. It's been over a year since I've been here, but see, it's almost like the skulls and then a spinal column that goes back here, like two giant serpents coiled around each other facing opposite directions like when they were dying or something like they curled up head to head facing the other ways like they were cuddled together uh, i don't know but it's kind of cool you can definitely get your imagination going and make you wonder <laughs> i would think where we're going right now if it was old giant serpents or dinosaurs were kind of crawling down the back side of one of them of the big python looking one let's see if we can get in the middle and look around all of this is covered in ice and snow it's not exactly the safest thing to crawl around on see it's like i can't even get in the middle on this side it's almost like a tube going down this whole way there's graffiti all over you can tell a lot of people come up here and mess around but that's because right on the other side of this uh mesa behind me and in the distance is a huge recreational area over there where a lot of people ride side by sides and go four-wheeling drive motorcycles and everything and down there is the petrified dinosaur tracks that a lot of people come to try and see oh well, hey I think I found a way to get up on top of this thing so maybe we can climb up and look down from above whoa that drops in like 10 feet down look at that right that's a huge crack you definitely don't want to fall in that but look it splits off and now I'm on top it goes all the way up there and then there's the one head and there's the other and I thought that was pottery but somebody was up here shooting a ceramic plate ah, makes it difficult okay I decided instead of going over the top ah this is what we're looking for access down the middle of the spinal column of the giant dinosaur dragon thing or whatever but this looks like the way in right here wow it's been a while since i've been here but what an experience this is really cool i want to bring the kids back up here and goof around doesn't it look like it it's just like a canyon a split in the rock going down so this would be like one of the spinal columns 
And then this would be the other, almost like two serpents intertwined out here in the bottom of this uh, prehistoric dried up riverbed. So I don't know, it's really weird. There's a lot of people who are into the mud flood. They're into uh, like Graham Hancock's theory and also like uh, forbidden history that there's different things and alternative past that is kept hidden from us. And sometimes when you get out and explore it, what you find is more unexpected than you think. There are some symbols carved on the wall here, but I really can't tell. I mean, I've seen that before and that one could be old, but it's right next to stuff that definitely does not look old at all. But this whole environment here is so cool. I could definitely see ancient indigenous people or ancestral Puebloans coming up here and staying. And it is just a shame that other people come up here and make such a mess. But I've lectured enough about that. You guys get the point, right? I'm up here looking for artifacts and instead I find a burnt up old mattress. It's disgusting. So, wow. Okay, so we just came back out. We're right in between the two. So this is the giant like python head right here. Look at that. It's so big, I almost can't even get it on screen. And then right down here, that is the back of the head of the other one. Almost like they were right here together. Now we gotta find a way down this whole slope without filling our shorts full of mud, right? Here we go. I'm still trying to keep my eye out for artifacts as I go too. You guys get the idea, look, people were even up here playing airsoft, there's airsoft BBs everywhere. I've gone all up and around the giant dragon skulls, up over the top, up through the spine. And now I'm so curious now with all this runoff and the moisture to see what other artifacts that we could find. Because I wonder if they connect or give me a clue as to where we're going next, which is the Mystery Valley over here. I used to call it the Creepy Canyon. So if you remember that series, like a little over a year ago, I started going from petroglyph panel to panel and going up this canyon, trying to follow the clues to see where they led. And that was different than the Magic Mesa. I was exploring this canyon when I was contacted by the people that helped maintain the Magic Mesa. And then I ended up over there exploring that entire area. But now I wanna go back to this mysterious canyon up this trail where all the petroglyphs are and see if I can hit every single panel with fresh eyes, with a new understanding to see if I can see what they mean uh, with what I know now and with everywhere I've been to see if I can see uh, what compares and what matches up to the other locations. In fact, there's pottery right here in between my boots. I just was narrating there and glanced down and there it is. Look, you can see the etchings where they made the pottery, where they scraped it with grass uh, in order to make it. Sometimes when you flip them over, they're even painted or painted on the other side. So. We're gonna leave that right there. But yeah, this is right where you can see tire tracks going through where people drive up and around. It's just so crazy. Most people don't pay attention. It's like everywhere I go, if I just crouch down right here and look around, look, there's flaking right there. There's pot shards everywhere motorcycle riders over there. I can't blame them. I mean, I love to ride ATVs. I love UTVs. I've ridden up here uh, through the area and everything before. I just want to draw awareness to pay attention to where you're at and choose your locations, you know. Um, speaking of which, we're going to go over to that strange mystery canyon right now uh, for our next little adventure. Hopefully we don't run into these guys with the shotguns or too much uh, craziness. Don't go anywhere, you guys, because we have a whole big adventure next. Plus, coming up soon, we're gonna be going back to Mount Wilson, back to Magic Mesa. I've got a whole bunch of cool stuff planned, including 
doing highly specialized video analysis on Magic Mesa where we're gonna be able to tell the difference between vehicle headlights and the supernatural phenomenon that seems to be occurring and appearing in geometric shapes on the side of the mountain. I have a method and a way and some colleagues to help me do that now. So we need to go back there and pay a visit as soon as the weather is good enough to be able to go there and stay overnight. Why is it that everywhere you find these ancient locations where there's petroglyphs of supernatural events, dumb stuff that I end up having to do, when I'm by myself. This rock looks just like another big python skull. This guy is just so cool. It was a little bit of a climb to get up here, but this is just the first of multiple panels of ancient indigenous petroglyphs that are authentic.